your unique story, our global audience. Global One Media. Welcome everyone to our Unique Journey series, where we bring you exciting, informative, and innovative stories from company executives globally. I'm your host, Ashley Barry, and today we're excited to welcome Howie Honeyman, Chief Executive Officer and President of Forward Water Technologies. The company uses its patented forward osmosis technology to save the Earth's water supply by reducing challenging waste streams while simultaneously returning fresh water for reuse or surface release. Really exciting. They're listed on the TSXV as FWTC. Innovative technology here. Howie, thanks so much for being here. Oh, it's my pleasure to be here, Ashley. Looking forward to the discussion. Absolutely. So on the heels of your exciting announcement about an agreement connected to your commercial demonstration unit, uh, let's talk a little bit about the partners involved in this agreement and the conditions attached to it and perhaps the process that led to its realization. Sure. So. One of the we're involved in a number of uh, industrial treatment sectors for compromised wastewater, but one of them that's really become to the forefront for a variety of reasons across that people are aware of across the globe is the isolation of lithium for EV batteries, and it turns out that a lot of that uh, lithium that is expected to come from underground aquifers, water that's stored underneath the ground, and to obtain that lithium, you have to process the water. And that water is exactly the type of water that Ford is in a position to treat, extract the water from those streams, concentrate the lithium, help clean it up, and allow it to be processed to what's called the lithium carbonate equivalent that enables the battery manufacturing. So we're really excited about that sector. We've seen a lot of uptake. We've been in discussions with uh, large globally positioned mining companies, as well as uh, some unique uh, smaller uh, very narrowly focused and targeted companies. Uh, and we've had some very, very good engagement with those companies to the extent we're providing consulting services for a, a number of them for water treatment. But we're also using that to learn about the sector and position our equipment. And we're ne now entered into negotiations uh, with at least one company for transferring our pilot equipment on site uh, to some of these operational facilities in, in South America. So we're really excited by the uptake, the interest, and participating in the global EV market is really exciting too. Exciting and important certainly sounds uh, like there's some potential here. And as you mentioned, uh, the technology really holds potential across a range of industries. Perhaps you could explain its efficacy and efficiency within the lithium sector specifically, and really what insights have you gathered about this field? Yeah, so, so lithium, you know, underground water deposits dissolve a large number of minerals. So they're really what we call from a chemistry perspective, very salty solutions, not just table salt, but all these other mineral contents. And within that is the lithium. So people have had to come up with all sorts of clever technology pathways to isolate that lithium and concentrate it. And this is what's referred to often you hear, the DLE or direct lithium extraction approach, mm -hmm. which is emerging from yesteryear's approach of just evaporating ponds of water. And because you're using this precise approach to pluck the lithium out of these salty or mineralized solutions, being able to concentrate those solutions both prior to the process and after the process to make the next step more efficient is exactly where we're, we're, we're positioned to do. Mm. The additional nice thing about our technology is, is, is twofold. Compared to a traditional technology, we're lower energy, so we have a lower CO2 footprint. And this is becoming critical to uh, harvesting lithium. You have to have an environmentally sustainable approach or the, the pathway just isn't viable. The second thing we do, which is really important as well, a lot of these lithium deposits are in very water-scarce regions. Our technology not only concentrates the lithium with the low energy, but returns the extracted water back as fresh water that can be reused in operations or released to surface as needed, so the community itself doesn't lose any of access to its water while that lithium is being removed from the aquifers. So we provide these multiple-layer benefits, I think. Um, and the industry is being focused on this, um, uh, even though it's early days, uh, as a whole. So I think it's really important all the way up to the end users of the battery, the automobile manufacturers. They are checking all the way down to the ground uh, where the lithium comes out to make sure that there's a sustainable, uh, non-greenwashed process being in place. And I think that's why people are seeing interest in our technology. 
So Howie, you know, I'm curious when you're out in the field and you're talking to people and you're explaining your technology, do they understand the significance and the importance of this for the earth? Well, we're we're an emerging technology, so there's definitely been an education process. Where do we fit in the in the treatment process, and what do we bring that's unique? But I think once you see the light bulb goes on, yeah. uh, uh, they see how they can implement our technology, um, and they see the mute, you know, the additional benefits beyond, you know, just just making it a chemically convenient process, but beyond, uh, we're beyond the horizon of traditional technologies, and we provide additional benefits. That to be perfectly honest, that the public is is demanding. They, the communities that this lithium deposits come from, they're demanding. The investor community is being demanding on these things. And I, to be honest, I'm going to tell you it's well placed. So we're meeting those we're meeting those checklists as well. Kind of like prime time there. Thanks for explaining that. Uh, perhaps you could share some insights briefly on the size of the market in South America and in terms of the lithium uptake and maybe what your expected market footprint in the region might be. So I think the the, the market is the market's large, right? It's, and and it was capped at I think last year somebody estimated, you know, using one of these uh, consultant numbers, seven point five billion dollars on an annual basis, but that is. That is going to be dwarfed by the growth of this particular market in the very near future. So this is something that is just going to rapidly grow. And I think the more salient point to discuss is that the gap between supply and demand. So supply is only going to be able to meet a fraction of the rapidly growing demand over the next 10 years and beyond. So this isn't a short-term problem in terms of supply and demand. This is this is something that's going to be established and growing uh, as a sector, providing value to shareholders and however they're involved in the lithium supply chain, uh, 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 and a really viable growth market. And so I, I hesitate on cap putting a number on it, but you know you're looking at you know forty fifty billion dollar a year annual gross market sector just for lithium carbon equivalents in the very near future, and it's. Um, a very interesting sector to be involved in because of the environmental sustainable constraints, but the business factors are very clear as well. Um, so it's it's kind of like a, a you know a golden moment out in the industry, right? All mm-hmm. these things are, are converging together uh, for the for perhaps the right but unfortunate reasons that we have to deal with uh, uh, global climate change. Um, but right. this is a really good way to, to start tackling it. Absolutely. You know, for those watching this, uh, you know, next steps in the near future, what can folks expect? So I think we've spent the last 12 months or or more developing the client relationships. Um, We probably have, uh, well, we do have well over uh, 20 NDAs signed with both large mining companies and focused lithium companies. So really the next step for us is, is getting equipment out into the field and operating uh, that equipment on a commercial basis, uh, even in a demonstration mode, meaning meaning tons of lithium carbon and equivalent on, an, on a monthly basis uh, in the very near future. And that's our, we're focused on that goal. We, we see reasons to believe that we're going to be able to close on that. Mm-hmm. And when we do, that's going to be a revenue generating for our company in a, in a way that becomes enabling for us for the further steps and the scale up to thousands of cubic meters of treatment per capacity per day uh, and 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 beyond, right? So the, the the market's large. We also believe it's a race to be second. After you get your first equipment on the ground, you prove that it's uh, uh, effective, and we have good reason to believe from our engineering studies that it, this is going to be uh, something that the market sees really as exciting. There's going to be quicker adoption, right? Uh, everybody's waiting for that first choice, and we think we're close to that. So it sounds like right now could be the most opportune moment to invest in forward water technologies. Any final thoughts, Howie? Well, uh, yeah, one, uh, you know, risks always have inherent, uh, uh, or investments always have an inherent risks with them. Um, but I think I think the, the industry is pulling technologies like ours into the into the hurricane of lithium production. And I and I think we're going to be part of that. So yeah, I'm I, I feel very positive about the future of the company. I love that analogy. (laughs) Howie Honeyman, Chief Executive Officer and President of Forward Water Technologies. Thank you for your time and for sharing your exciting story. We look forward to sharing updates with our audience in the very near future. My pleasure, Ashley. Thank you.